Hey everybody, what's up? This is Salar and you're watching a Smart Code. We are working with Windows Form applications in the .NET and learning how to transfer data between the forms. In our previous tutorial, we learned how to transfer data from Form 2 back to Form 1. And that was quite simple to implement. So we will continue to learn this technique because there are several methods of ways to accomplish data transfer between the form. In this application, we are going to send data from Form 1 to Form 2. Form 1 is our sender and Form 2 is receiver. So here, have a look at the application that we are going to develop. We have our Form 1, which is a sender. I'm going to send the data. And I have three text boxes. Uh, here, I will read a first name, last name, and an email. And then we are going to press the send button, which is going to send data to the second form. So let's now click on it. And now you can see the second form, which is form two, and the name of the form is receive or receiver. And here the data is received. So we successfully transferred data from form one to form two. Now this task, data transfer between forms can be accomplished via different ways. For example, we can use constructor, static variables, properties, objects, and delegates. We are not going to cover all the methods uh, in a single video. Instead, we will do a separate video for each method. So there are more videos to come on this topic and you need to be stay tuned. Now, in this lecture, we will learn the constructor method. We will see how we use the form constructor to transfer data. So let's jump into the code and learn this technique. Here in my application, I have two forms, form one and form two. Here you see the form one, form one is gonna send the data and here you see the form two, which is gonna receive the data. And here we have the code uh, belongs to the form one and this code belongs to the form two. Let's go inside the form one's code. Okay, if you have watched this lecture, then you might have better understanding of forms class code. In this lecture, we actually tried to study a Windows form application and the form control. I would recommend to take this lecture if we give you more insights about the form and the Windows form application. Coming back to the program, form, as you can see here, is just a class which is derived from the base form class. And here we have form class constructor. This is where we are gonna put our focus on. A constructor in general is a method and every class implements at least one constructor. So when we create a Windows Form application, we get a form, a default form, which is called Form1. And that form is called by the application. As we run the application, we see the Form1. So where do application call this form? I mean Form1. If you go inside the program.cs file, so here, down there, you will see a application run method. So you see our application is actually calling the form one by creating an instance variable of that form. I hope you are not confused, but you might be confused if you have no idea about the classes. But I will try my best to make things simpler. Now listen very carefully. In order to execute a class, we need its instance variable, right? A class can only be executed with the help of its instance variable. And in order to create that instance variable, we have to call the constructor method. In other words, you cannot create an instance variable of a class without calling the constructor method. So now we try to summarize this concept. When we run this application, we see form one and form one is just a class. So we see form one, that means someone executed that class. So who executed the form one? This application executed the form one. And in order to execute form one, like I said, our application needs an instance variable of form one. So here, with the help of new keyword, we are creating an instance variable. And like I said, we cannot create an instance variable without calling the constructor. So right after the new keyword, you see the form one constructor. So what you see here is a form one constructor, form one followed by two parentheses. It's a method which is called by our application. And that method is here. You see, this is a method which is called by the application. 
I hope you grasp the idea and you will get more understanding of it when you start working with the classes. So form one is actually executed by the application. So we don't need to worry about it. But form two is going to execute it by us. So just like what our application do, we need to create an instance variable of the form two uh, and to call the constructor. So this is our instance variable, which is called form two. And when we are creating it, we need to call the constructor. That means if you go inside the form two, so we are calling this method. And when we have the instance variable, we can display uh, the form two just by calling the show method on it. So if I run the program now and click on the button, I will see the form two. So let's check it out. So here we have our form one, which is displayed or called by the application. And now I click on this button and here you see our form two is called. So that was simple, right? Let's now move on and do some more stuffs. We want to send data via constructor method. Uh, we are inside the form one and form one has three tag boxes. So first uh, step should be to to save data in variables before we send it. So after saving data in variables, we are going to pass these variables as argument to the constructor math, right? Form to constructor math. Right, so we are passing our variables as argument to the form to method. Now, at this moment, you can see our program is complaining. And the complaint is very obvious that you can see on the screen. Form to does not contain a constructor that takes three arguments. And that is true. Form to, as you can see, uh, has a constructor like this. And this constructor is not capable of receiving arguments which we are sending from here. So we need to change the definition of form to constructor so that it can receive arguments. So we are sending three arguments and the type of the arguments is a string. So we are going to need three variables here. Now our form to constructor is capable of receiving data. These arguments actually called parameters. And these parameters are only initialized when we create instance variable, uh, which we are doing right here in the form one. So whatever we have in first name, last name, and email variable is gonna send to these parameters. And now we can use these parameter variables in form two. Form two has three labels. So we can use these labels to print that out. That's it. We will now be able to transfer data between the forms. Let's now run this application, provide some data. And here you see our second form is receiving the data successfully. This is how we use constructor method to send data. Just remember one thing, constructor is just a method and you can use it to pass arguments. Here you can send variables, array, objects, and even uh, collections. So let me show you one more example. Instead of variables, now we are gonna send a collection, a list collection. And instead of three separate variables, we are gonna uh, save data in our list. And now we can send the entire list as argument to the constructor like this and once again our program is complaining because the constructor is not capable of accepting or receiving the list we just need to change the definition of our form to constructor as we are sending the list so we'll mention here the type of the data we are going to receive here it is string and the variable list variable let's say user data that's it and now we can use this list to print data.
let's give it a run now send the data and here we are receiving the data successfully so my friends that was the simple tutorial on transferring data between the forms and we accomplished this task using the constructor method i hope this tutorial is going to help you out in your projects in the next tutorial we will continue with this topic but use another method to transfer data we will use uh, public static variables to accomplish this task right so i will see you in the next tutorial thanks for watching